do you work from home or will you find yourself working from home in the coming weeks or the coming months? And if so, I'm going to share some of my favorite tips for working from home so you can make sure that you are scheduling your day out to have the best and most efficient impact as possible uh, for the recent news that is going on. And when I say recent news, I'm sure all of you are aware of the spread of coronavirus and it's caused a lot of sporting events to be put on hiatus, entire seasons to be uh, put on hiatus until further notice, conferences are getting canceled, um, a lot of events with a gathering essentially of 250 people or more are finding themselves either canceling outright or they're moving the, or their events to a virtual environment. And with this, you can also expect that to happen in the workplace where many employers are now telling their employees be prepared to work from home and be prepared to work from home for a while. And now for a lot of people, you may not have ever worked from home. But for someone like myself, I have actually worked from home for three years now. And, and I know that from, you know, sort of personal experience, I love it. But I know that other people find it a little bit challenging to make that adjustment uh, from a normal work environment in order to work remotely or, or to, to work out of their house, maybe a coffee shop. But I'm here to share my tips on how to be the most successful version of yourself while working from home. Now, maybe this is your first time catching one of my videos. Uh, and if so, my name is Blythe Brumleaf. I own a digital marketing agency called digitaldispatch.io where I mainly help trucking and logistics companies with ROI driven websites. I also have an entrepreneur focused blog at bonjourwithblythe.com where I share, you know, sort of the wins and losses of being an entrepreneur in today's world. And you sort so it, basically all that to say that I, I'm pretty well versed in, in working from home and, and creating a lifestyle around working from home, if that's even a thing that I, I feel like a lifestyle is just a thing and then you know, work from home as part of it. But that's neither here nor there. But as uh, evident with the random hammering that you may hear throughout this video, whenever you work from home, distractions can pop up everywhere. And so I'm going to share with you some of my favorite tips on a successful work from home lifestyle. And tip number one, I'm just gonna jump right into it. Block off your calendar but communicate that calendar to your boss. Say you have a boss, I, I'm the boss with my particular company, but I have clients that I work with that are technically my bosses. Or maybe you are shifting from uh, a traditional work environment to working from home and you have to pretty much rearrange your schedule so that your boss knows uh, what you're doing each and every day. And so with that, what I like to do is I like to do calendar blocking and how I'll set up my schedule for the week is what I'll do is every Sunday I will write down three to four four is kind of ambitious, but usually two to three priority projects that I want to make sure that I get done that week. And now in addition to that, I put those events earlier in the week so that I can make sure that I tackle those big projects first and foremost. And when I do plan on tackling those big projects first and foremost, I'll tackle them first thing in the morning before I get email, before I jump on social media, I want to tackle those projects first. First. And blocking off your calendar helps tremendously in that regard because then your boss knows what you're doing. Uh, your clients can't sneak in with an email asking for a last minute demand and you're still, but you're still answering those emails, but you're doing them at a later time. Some of you may work in an environment where your boss is kind of expect, you're expected to be on email all the time, which is probably understandable for a lot of companies that are making this transition to having a remote workforce. They still wanna have that almost like big brother vibe where they're making sure that you're doing what you're supposed to be doing all the time. But if you communicate, if you block off your schedule and you make that schedule public to your boss, then they know what you're working on. And if you don't deliver on those projects, then that's on you and that's your fault. And so when you set aside those priority projects, you're still taking care of all of the things that you are meant to do, but then you still have a little bit of freedom to not have to get dressed up 
for the office, not have to worry about hair and makeup. I, I did makeup for this video, but if you notice, I'm in a regular t-shirt. Uh, most of the time when I do my videos from home, when I am working from home, I have a nice shirt up top and pajama pants on the bottom. That's one of the really good benefits of working from home, but some people find to be more successful when they do act like they're getting ready for work in the morning. They get dressed up in work clothes and then they go right to their office within within their home environment. And, and if that works for you, great. To me, that's a lot of wasted time. It's a lot of wasted hair and makeup products. So I choose not to do that. Um, but the, the key with, I think, with the theme of a lot of this video is you have to sort of maneuver and you have to find out what works best for you. But starting off with tip number one is to block off your calendar with the most important priority projects that you have of the day of the week and then diving into your social obligations which includes the emails and and social media and any other kind of messaging that your know, connections phone calls things like that that you have to sort of get out into the world my second tip and it's one of the more important ones is to put your cell phone in another room. Because let me tell you how many times you're gonna pick up that cell phone, you're gonna scroll social media, you're gonna scroll your emails, you're gonna get distracted, uh, text messages, things like that. And, and the biggest culprit behind that are friends and family who may be in a similar situation to you where they're working in a traditional workforce and then they're going into a work from home environment and it almost feels like a vacation. It's not a vacation, you still have work to do. And the biggest distraction that pulls you away from that work and makes your boss not trust you, makes your clients not trust you, is the fact that you're getting distracted by your cell phone. So the, that what I have found that really, really helps me is to take my cell phone and put it in the other room and then I'm only checking it when I'm going to get coffee or when I'm taking a bathroom break or or just you know a 15 minute break here or there that's when I check my phone because otherwise if it's sitting right next to me I'm going to get distracted and my work is going to suffer so that's a big one is putting your phone in the other room so you're not tempted to even look at it do that one, try that one. That's probably the most important one on this entire list. Now, tip number three is try to, and, and it sort of piggybacks off of the last tip, is try to ignore the addiction of social media. During a sort of a, a, a pandemic like this, it is really, really easy to get sucked into social media. And then before you know it, hours pass on by and you don't know what you've done with your life except for just grow your inner anxiety. Maybe you bought a bunch of global pandemic uh, treats or you know stuffed supplies to keep in your house. And then you start just emotionally eating and it's, it, Floridians deal with this a lot during hurricanes. When an impending hurricane is going to be coming, uh, a lot of us will just sit there and we'll just continuously refresh social media and then we'll eat up, end up eating all of our hurricane snacks and the damn storm gets here and we got nothing to eat. Don't do that because it's scrolling social media will only increase your anxiety about it. So block those apps from your desktop, from your, you don't necessarily have to delete them from your phone, but it could help you in, in a situation like this where you're trying to make that transition into a either a work from home lifestyle or just a better work from home uh, environment where you're not getting distracted all of the time. And to piggyback off of that as well, there are a couple different desktop apps that really, really help me curb my social media addiction. And one of those is called the Pomodoro Method. And I, th I think I'm saying that right, P-O, M O D O R O. I think that's that. Yeah, that it's Pomodoro method. And and one of these browser extensions is called the Marinara Pomodoro. And you can install it on Chrome. I'm pretty sure they have an extension for for Firefox as well. But it's basically the methodology of working in increments. So you work and you focus for 25 minutes. It's a timer on your browser. You set it and the timer goes off after 25 minutes and then you take a five minute break and you do this three times in a row before you take a long break and a long break is considered like 30 to 45 minutes I believe. So you set these increments so that you're focusing and it not only helps your focus but it also helps the, the eye stress 
of looking at a screen for long periods of time, which focusing on anything for long periods of time can affect your vision, can, can, you know, just make a high sensitivity. Before I tried this method, uh, I, I would have days where like by 2 p.m. my eyes are just completely watering and just dried out and irritated. But so ever since I started this method, it's really, really helped the dryness of my eyes. Um, I know a lot of people will probably hear them say, oh, we'll get some blue light lenses. And that's not from what I have found out recently that actually the blue light lenses are kind of a scam. Yes, the blue light is intense, but any, but eye doctors, you know, people who aren't trying to sell you blue light lens glasses, the, all of the research says to the contrary that simply concentrating, looking at something for more than 20 minutes causes eye strain. So the blue light filter really doesn't do anything. It doesn't help that you're still looking at something for more than 20 minutes. It's going to affect your eyes. So taking a step back, taking a walk around your house, uh, maybe a walk around the neighborhood, that's probably a little bit more than, than what your boss may, may allow. That's more than your five minute break with the Pomodoro method, um, but that should help. And it's called the Marinara Pomodoro. And there's lots of other different apps out there, but I just really like that one because it's, it's very simple to use. And when the 25 minutes is up, a, a screen pops up, no matter what you're working on, a screen pops up and it tells you now it's time to take a break. And then you X out of it and you can start your little break and then you can come back to that screen and start your next 25 minute work session. Another app that I really, really love too is, is it, a lot of people love to listen to music while they're working, but sometimes you need that, that concentration where you're not hearing words if that makes sense. Like when I'm writing or when I'm, I'm writing copy or blog posts, even emails, things like that, I find it really uh, difficult to write well when you're listening to music and you're hearing different words in your ear. So what this other app that I, I love is called Brain.fm and it's a focus playlist. Now they have like the sleep playlists and all that that you can listen to while you're going to sleep or just simply like background noise. But these, uh, this particular focus playlist, and I'm going to read directly from their rep, their website because it's like scientifically created to where it's different waves that go through. Let, let me just, let, let me let them explain it. But it says brain.fm holds patents on key processes for creating functional music, including technology to elicit strong neural phase locking, allowing populations of neurons to engage in various kinds of coordinated activities and technology to remove distress distraction in sound. This makes our music unique, purpose-built to steer you in a desired mental state. In other words, we found ways to create new music that helps you do what you need to do. And for this, it definitely, I mean, it's not going to be music that you're going to be sort of, you know, vibe into. It's not that kind of music. It's background music, but it's specifically in a non-scientific way that they explain it. It's just background music to help your brain focus better without being distracted by different words and verbiage and things like that. So brain.fm is, is a focus playlist that I love. So when you can pair the Pomodoro method with the timer into the brain.fm music, like you can knock out an entire day's work in what ha like a half a day. So when I use both of those things together, it really, really helps to expedite and, and helps me work to more efficiently and get things done better and faster, which is key when you're working from home. Now my next tip, tip number four, is to use video conferencing software to get FaceTime with others. Now, when you're working from home, one of the bigger shocks initially is that you kind of miss that water cooler talk. You kind of miss people showing up to your desk and, and, you know, asking how your day is and, or, you know, how your boyfriend's doing or, you know, what do you want to eat for lunch? Things like that. You, you kind of miss that. I, yeah, me, I don't really miss it. I get enough of those conversations all day. I get text messages, uh, nonstop instant messages, and it's just, it's almost, it's, too much. So for me, I don't really miss it, but I know that that's one of the bigger gripes for a lot of people that they say that they need the social environment of working in and around people in order to really succeed at work. I kind of think that's poor shit. But at the same time, it's, it, you know, different strokes for different folks. So if you 
find yourself in one of those environments where you need to have a face-to-face -face meeting with someone, Zoom is going to be your best friend while working from home. And one of the better tips about Zoom is that they have one of those fantastic face filters to where if you are working from home and you don't want to do your makeup, you don't want, you still want to look presentable. Maybe you haven't even had your coffee yet and your boss is trying to have, you know, a 7.30 a.m. meeting. Well, get on Zoom and get that little filter and then you won't look like as much of a hot mess as you feel like you look. So Zoom is a great one for video conferencing. Also a side, side tip for those of you who are into podcasting and video interviews, Zoom is also really, really good for that as well. An alternative to Zoom, Zoom is free by the way. Uh, so in addition to Zoom, there's other free platforms as well, Google Hangouts and Skype. Um, Skype, you know, used to get a bad rep in back in the day, but they've really made a lot of improvements to their platform. Um, so that is working uh, a lot better than what it used to be. And uh, so those are the two, those are really the three programs that you could be using and to alleviate that, or not alleviate, but help with your need of face-to-face -face communication. So that's Zoom, also Google Hangouts, and also Skype for the OGs out there of the internet world. Now, tip number five is you better make sure you have headphones charged and ready. And when I say charged, obviously I'm referring to wireless Bluetooth headphones, but also make sure that you have headphones available for if you run out of battery, maybe you're working at a coffee shop, but make sure that you have two types of headphones available because there will be distractions in the neighborhood. There will be things that you can't control. Maybe you're in a situation like me where you have random construction going on throughout the entire day and you have to block out that noise. Maybe you're working in a household where your children are running around or, or maybe both you and your spouse are now working from home and you need to really focus. Headphones to me are that signifier to other people, hey, I'm working, please don't disturb me unless it's really, really important. So for that, make sure you have several pairs of headphones ready to go just in case both wired and unwired. And now I slowly, uh, I, well, I, I just mentioned that, uh, you know, if you have headphones on, it's sort of the universal symbol to not talk to people or not for people to not talk to you. But there are situations where maybe you grow tired of working at your house and you want to have some kind of a social interaction. So maybe you want to go work out of a coffee shop for the day. I have sort of a love-hate relationship with working out of coffee shops. It's sometimes, some of the times you can get some of your best work done in a coffee shop, but that's also contingent on other people not bothering you. So what I have found is that if you're wearing headphones at a coffee shop, Nine times out of 10, people won't bother you. So headphones are key in that regard as well. But you're going to run into situations. And when I talk about the love-hate relationship, the part of the hate relationship that I have with coffee shops is that you're starting to see more people that are working out of them. They start to recognize you the more and more you work out of a coffee shop. So they want to stop. They want to come hang out. They want to sit next to you, have a conversation. And it's you still have to... Uh, you have to be respectful and not be like a total jerk to that person and tell them, hey, I'm working. But that to me, bringing the headphones to the coffee shop symbolizes, hey, I'll have a conversation with you for a few minutes, but these headphones are going back in because I have work to do and that's why I'm here. Unless, of course, you're just trying to go to a coffee shop to work, then, you know, do your own thing. But for me, uh, I will not go to a coffee shop to work unless I have headphones and I will bring both the wired and the unwired because I cannot stand when people interrupt you. Maybe it's a, you know, a colleague, maybe it's a fellow coworker, maybe it's, you know, a random dude trying to hit on you and it's it, 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 the headphones to me are the ultimate godsend. So they will help you in either case, really, if you just grow tired of just being at your house and you want a different environment, which can also really spur the creativity when you're not faced with the at-home distractions, because you will, you do have to turn that off when you're working from home. Yes, of course, you can tackle, you know, throwing in a load of laundry, um, but it's really easy to get distracted by, oh, well, let me fix that plant outside, or let me, you 
you know, fold these clothes really quick. You still have to keep the mindset that this is a work day and it goes back to my earlier tips of blocking off your schedule, using the Pomodoro method, making sure that you're focusing on the right things during your available work time. Um, so just make sure that you keep those little things in mind that those distractions can add up when you're talking about doing laundry during the day. Well, let me just, you know, get dinner started and I can just do this other, these other little things first. Those little things add up, especially when you add in the extra distractions from social media and other commitments that may be around you. When you are done for the day, and maybe maybe not if you're even done for the day, maybe if you're on a long lunch break, there's also the situation that we're going to be facing where gyms likely will become the place that are also closed down to the public as well. That should not stop your workouts. And if you have a little bit, maybe you have a little bit of like cabin fever where you just got to get out of the house, you got to get some aggression out or not even aggression, but you just got to get some mental clarity. And for me, going to the gym is that exact mental clarity. Sure, you get the benefit of the physical benefits of the results that you get to see by going to the gym. But for me, the more important benefit that I get out of it is the mental clarity. I never, and you will never regret a workout. You never leave a workout and feel like, oh, I shouldn't have done that. You might sit around and debate with yourself on you know, whether I should go to the gym or not, and you still have to keep that as a priority. Now, even if you're not allowed to go to the gym, maybe your local gym is closed down during this coronavirus crisis, which it probably will be. The gym is one of the places that you have to disinfect a lot of things after before and after really every workout or every set that you do on different machines. So you have to keep that in mind that you might have to switch your workouts or you might have to start up a workout routine at your house. And you don't have to go crazy with all the equipment. Body weight workouts are fantastic. There's plenty of YouTube videos out there that you can search that have lots of body weight exercises. And I guarantee you after you do those and if you put those into your blocked off schedule, there's zero chance that you will regret it. And it'll help you with the the sort of the transition of feeling like, oh, you know, my, my, my work and my home space are no longer separated. It feels like they've sort of combined into two where you can't separate the two. Working out helps you alleviate that additional anxiety, that additional stress. So make sure that you're making going to the gym and if your gym is closed, still finding time and making it a priority to work out. It's a big, big thing that a lot of people miss out on. Now, when you're off work and you've done your workouts and you're still finding yourself sort of stuck at home because you can't really go to any events, uh, this is also going to be the perfect time for a lot of you to catch up on that book that you've been meaning to read, maybe a video game that you've been wanting to play, or an arts and crafts project that you, you, you've wanted to tackle but haven't seemed to find the time. We're going to be faced with a lot of these decisions over the next few months, and the, this is going to be the perfect time to get back to a little bit of me time, or maybe, you know, a little bit of quality time with your significant other, or maybe your kids, your parents, and arts and crafts and video games and, and books are really for solitary. But any, any of those other things are going to be really great. So think creatively. Try to think outside the box. Um, it's not all doom and gloom as far as that's concerned. Just make sure that you're you're adding to the personal, the off time. Even though you're working from home, you still need to make it a priority to add to that personal off time too. And the, really the best way to do that is through your extracurricular activities that don't require going into large public spaces because those probably aren't going to be available think uh, that about wraps up a lot of my tips, but I did want to share, you know, just a final couple notes and, and probably the most important one on this list is to be nice check on your neighbors. This is going to be a really stressful time for a lot of people. And, and check on your neighbors and your family. I was just reading a story earlier today about this woman who pulled up into the parking lot and she wanted to get some supplies from the grocery store. And there was an elderly couple parked next to her and they rolled down the window and asked her to do her grocery shopping for them. They were terrified to go into the grocery store because they felt like they were going to, you know, contract coronavirus, contract something that was going to harm them. And so what they, what she did, what the elderly couple did, she gave the woman a hundred dollar bill and a grocery list. And the woman went inside and did the grocery shopping for them, came back out, put the groceries in the trunk of the car. And the woman was so incredibly 
thankful that this perfect stranger just did this for them. And 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 in times that our people are panicking and and they're uh, stressed and anxiety is just through the roof, you look for the helpers. And in this situation, this woman just maybe i don't think it's it, it's it's unfair to say that she possibly saved this couple's life they're elderly they're they're at more risk of contracting a deadly disease that could negatively affect them and their family and they had no one else around to help them so they waited in that car for close to an hour before they found somebody that they thought they could trust to give them cash to give them a grocery list and to hope that this woman would bring their money back to them with a full supply list and and not just really just hits my heart because there are so many people around that are going to need that help. So be the person, if you're able to, be the person that's going to be able to help somebody in need. Obviously don't, you know, don't do it to the detriment of your own health, but in a situation like that, just be nice, be a nice person. And and I think it just goes without saying that this entire situation is don't panic, stay vigilant, but don't panic because panic doesn't help anybody. There's gonna be plenty of people that are gonna be panicking in the coming weeks in the coming months over the situation and and it's the last thing that society needs is people to panic and to 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 think that there's you know that, that there's only going to be the worst possible case outcome and when an overwhelming majority of healthy Americans are going to be just fine unless you have an underlying immune disorder um, or, or something else that's affecting your health obesity uh, even older smokers things like that 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 that's going to increase your chances of this coronavirus being uh, significantly more impactful on your life possibly death so obviously take the proper precautions wherever you see fit, help your neighbors, help your family wherever you see fit, but panic is not the thing to do. Listen to medical professionals. There's also, I'm going to link to this episode of uh, Joe Rogan where he had this week, where he had a gentleman by the name of Michael Osterholm, and I hope I pronounced that correctly, but O-S-T-E-R-H-O-L-M. He's an internationally recognized expert in infectious disease, and he has about an hour and a half talk with Joe Rogan where he answers basically all, not basically, he answers answers all kinds of questions about coronavirus, where it was started, um, how it's spread, and that there's a common misconception out there that you're wearing a face mask and that's going to help you. That's not the case. This is a disease, this is a virus that is spreading simply by breathing the same air within a certain three foot radius of another person that could be infected. And you could be infected for weeks and not, not have any symptoms before it's too late. So this is, it's a very serious situation, but it's also one that this doctor doctor believes that you should have the truth first and foremost. So I'm going to link to that in this episode. And so if you haven't checked it out, I highly, highly recommend checking it out. Don't listen to these people on social media that claim to be experts. Get information directly from the horse's mouth. And in this case, this guy has been studying infectious diseases his entire life all over the globe. And he warned the US government, he warned a lot of people about this upcoming epidemic. And 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 so far, everything he's predicted has come true. And so this is, it's, a, uh, it's an incredibly insightful interview that I highly recommend that you watch like immediately right after you finish watching this. He gets super in depth with the reasoning, but it's better for us to know the truth than to not. So with all of that said, for all of you who are new to the remote work game, I hope you found this video helpful. And even if you've been working remotely for a while, I hope maybe some of these tips can help you in improve your work from home lifestyle to become more efficient. And uh, so with all of that said, uh, you can find more of my work on YouTube and Instagram by following my business accounts at Digital Dispatch or Digi Dispatch on Instagram. And you can also follow my personal accounts. Bonjourwithblife.com has all of the links, you know, to TikTok, to Instagram, to all of those different things. But bonjourwithblife.com is mainly my personal blog. So until next time, stay safe, stay vigilant, and most importantly, do not panic. We don't need more panic in the world. We need more calm, resourceful, just education that is spread to the public. But in all cases, you should be the helper in this. So stay safe out there, my friends, and until next time, be healthy.